ඔෆිස් එකේදි විතරක් නෙවෙයි මම දැන් ගෙදරදිත් IDD කෝස් ගන්න SLT ෆෝන් එකේ ඔබේ නිවසේ SLT දුරකථනය දැන් IDD පහසුකම සහිතයි making headlines on first at 9 more hikes association of container transporters to increase their charges calls for a common fuel pricing formula will be increasing our rates from the 20th of this month june by 15% the premier says prices will be reduced when global prices drop state visit president maithripala sirisena leaves for iran amidst a turbulent time for the middle east nation Waiting for a decision. Former Defence Secretary Gotabaya Rajapaksha rests his arrival in politics with the former president. Won't be long. Deputy Minister Karuna Ratna Parnivitana reveals when the effects of the judicature amendment bill would be felt. In two weeks, Justice Minister has to establish this court. Ousted and restricted. Ex-Malaysian Prime Minister Najib Razak banned from leaving the country. A very good evening and welcome to First at 9. I'm Katrina Chan. On to your top story tonight. Association of Containers of Transporters urged the government to introduce a common fuel pricing formula for both Ceylon Petroleum Corporation and Lanka Indian Oil Company. They say that the prices of fuel should be the same for both of them. Addressing a media briefing today, President of the Association, Nimal Amarasekar, has said they will increase their fares by 15%. from the 20th of june in line with the fuel pricing formula introduced by the government the ceylon petroleum corporation increased fuel prices which resulted in the price of a liter of octane 92 petrol going up to 137 rupees while octane 95 shooting up to 148 rupees price of auto diesel went up to 109 rupees per liter while super diesel is now sold at 119 rupees on the same day welcoming the price hike of the cpc lanka indian oil company also increased their fuel prices accordingly the revised price of a liter of lanka auto diesel will be 111 rupees lanka super diesel will be 119 rupees and lanka petrol 92 octane will be 137 rupees In such a backdrop the three wheel fares for the first kilometer was increased by 10 rupees from midnight the same day making the new minimum fare 60 rupees Meanwhile the association of container transporters too convened a media briefing today in Colombo to announce their stance on the fuel price hike I urge the government to bring a formula for both Cipetco and IOC to have the same rate because it's a it's a problem for us because when they have two different prices people who are going to going to the sheds to pump diesel is a bit of a crisis therefore i urge the government to have one formula and also will be increasing our rates from the 20th of this month june by 15% not only due to the diesel increase but there are other commodities that have increased tires batteries lubricants and port permits therefore we are compelled to increase the rates by 15%. Prime Minister Ranil Wickremesinghe intends to reduce the recently hiked fuel prices when prices in the global market drop. The Premier made this remark on the much talked about issue in the country at a function held in Hikkadu of Ingol today. Prime Minister Ranil Wickremesinghe unveiled the newly built four-story building at the Hikkadu Divisional Secretariat this evening with a total investment of over 68 million rupees. We cannot control the global oil prices. While we increase the oil prices when it's increased globally, we should also reduce the oil prices when the prices drop in the world market. In 2014, a barrel was reduced to $55, but petrol, diesel and kerosene were not reduced. In 2015, the oil prices went down and we decided to reduce prices down to 117 rupees. In 2017, the oil prices hiked with a barrel of oil rising up to $67. By yesterday a barrel rose to 77 dollars 
So from $37 to $71, we had to pay an additional amount of money to bring oil from outside, following which petrol prices were increased up to 137 rupees. Many arguments arose regarding the prices of kerosene. The Petroleum Corporation pointed out that the concession of kerosene was withdrawn due to the use of it in vehicles as a substitute for petrol. That was the reason behind the increase of kerosene prices. We hope to reduce the prices of oil when the global oil prices go down. The global prices will come down within a year or so, and we hope to give its benefits to the public. <laughs> President Maitri Pala Sirisena left for Iran today to engage in a two-day state visit at the invitation of his Iranian counterpart, Hassan Rouhani. During his visit, the president is expected to further enhance Iran-Sri Lanka economic and trade ties, as well as encouraging Iranian investments in Sri Lanka. Sri Lankan ambassador to Iran, Sharif Hanif, says that the president's visit comes at an important juncture and will be a beginning of a new chapter of renewed relationship between the two countries. President Maitripala Sirisena left for Iran this morning to engage in a two-day state visit. This is the first state visit to Iran by President Sirisena after assuming duties as president. The official meeting between the two heads of state will be held tomorrow. During the meeting, new MOUs to further strengthen economic and trade ties are to be signed between the two countries. President Sirisena is also scheduled to attend a special investment and trade forum organized by the Iran Chamber of Commerce. During his visit, the president will also visit Iran's parliament. We are planning to sign about five memorandum of understandings are going to be signed between the two countries. So this visit is going to open up a new chapter in the relationship of both countries. Uh, there are a lot of things can be done uh, in the future, I think. I am mainly focusing on three things. Uh, one is promoting uh, the bilateral trade between the two countries. There are a lot of opportunities and uh, we can further promote it. And second thing is uh, promoting tourism. So unfortunately, we are having very few numbers of uh, Iranian tourists in Sri Lanka. According to my understanding, almost uh, uh, eight to nine million Iranians are visiting abroad every year as tourists. But we have only less than 10,000 Iranians visiting our country. And third thing is promoting the foreign direct investment. Meanwhile, the president unveiled the Vayambarana Abhiman War Heroes Monument in Kurunagala yesterday. The new monument has been established to replace the displacement of War Heroes Monument due to the Kurunagala Damulla Main Road development project. War heroes should not be used for other political gains as it is immoral and inhumane. There are those who say that our government is hunting down war heroes. In the past three years, I have tried my level best to work with world leaders, United Nations, the UNHRC, as well as other international organizations to ensure that our forces who were under scrutiny for committing war crimes, especially during the last stages of the war, are protected. It is because of our government that our war heroes do not have to appear before international courts. It is not a secret that there are certain individuals in the army who have been involved in murder and torture of journalists who had to be arrested as part of investigations. This is not a so-called hunt. Therefore, I reject all such allegations leveled against the government relating to war heroes as they are all politically motivated. <laughs> Former President Mahindra Raja Paksha says that the Victory Day celebrations which fall on the 18th of this month is purposefully ignored by some. The Victory Day celebrates Sri Lanka defeating terrorist group, the LTTE, which fought a bloody civil war for over three decades before their military defeat in 2009. The former president touched on the lack of enthusiasm by some to mark the day while addressing a function held in Bandaragama. Former President Mahindu Rajapaksa attended a religious event at the Vikramashila Vidyaratna Periven in Bandaragama. 
When we look at the situation of the country today, people find it difficult to live. We hear that price of milk powder increased one day and the price of some other good increased another. The price of fuel increased along with the price of kerosene, which is the biggest hike. It is mostly used in poor households. During our era, we were able to provide electricity for around 98 to 99 percent of households in the country, including South and East. This month, we were able to celebrate the victory in the civil conflict that existed in this country for over 30 years thanks to war heroes who sacrificed their lives. Today, some have purposefully ignored the celebrations. Former Secretary of Defence Gotabi Rajapaksha rests the final decision on him arriving in politics with his brother and former President Mahinda Rajapaksha. He spoke on the matter while responding to questions raised by journalists following a religious program in Godakavela. The new statue of Lord Buddha at the Sri Mahinda Rama Temple in Godakavela was unveiled by former Defence Secretary Gotabe Rajapaksa this morning. Former Minister W.D.J. Seneviratna was also present at during the occasion. The chief incumbent of the Kandavihare told me that I went off track earlier and that I'm back again. It's true. I followed that track because of this party and not because of an individual. From that very day I left, I fought a battle within the party for unity. Some within the party even attacked me. In such a situation, I made note of a person suitable for our party's leadership. It is none other than Gotabe Rajapaksha. However, the leaders of our party who argued with me today recognized that Gotabe Rajapaksha is the person suitable to represent our party and to take over these responsibilities of the country. <laughs> Following the event, former Defence Secretary Gotabe Rajapaksa responded to questions raised by journalists. I think Tadangota got the Gila Piana Governor Binamatan. No such decision is made yet. Mahindra Rajapaksha should take that decision in that regard. We will make the decision once he makes his. Let's cross over to a short commercial break. You are watching Sri Lanka's award-winning news channel, Other Verana 24-7. The idea of the Office of Missing Persons created an intense dialogue within the society, with some all for the move, while others said were, of, said were of the view that it is a move which targets members of Sri Lanka's military. In such a backdrop, the Office of Missing Persons launched a series of regional-level consultations, commencing from the area of Marurat in Mana today. Speaking to First at Nine, its chairman, President's Council, Salia Pires, said that during its first phase of public consultations, the families of the disappeared pressed on the need of the state to be fully committed towards the cause of the disappeared and the need to back the Office of Missing Persons in this regard. The Act pertaining to the Office of Missing Persons was passed in Parliament in 2016 and it is vested with the responsibility of determining the status of all missing persons in Sri Lanka. The Human Rights Council of the United Nations also requested the Sri Lankan government to expedite the process of appointing members to the Office of Missing Persons and named it as a mechanism of utmost importance which will take Sri Lanka towards a migratory justice. According to seven members for the Office of Missing Persons was appointed on the 1st of March this year for a term of three years, with President's Counsel Salia Pires as its chair. In such a backdrop, the Office of Missing Persons launched a series of regional level consultations, commencing from Marurar of Mena today. The consultations are scheduled to be held with the families of missing and disappeared persons, activists, professionals and organizations working on the issue. In the coming weeks, members of the OMP will visit Kalutara, Trinkamali, Muletiu, Kandy, Kirinochi, Jaffna, Pateklo and Ampara in a first phase of visits. Speaking to First at Nine, the chairman of the Office of Missing Persons, President's Counsel Salia Piris said that the state should be fully committed towards the cause of the disappeared. 
families pressed on the need of the state to uh, be fully committed towards the cause of the disappeared and to trace the disappeared, the need for the state to strongly back the OMP in this regard. There are the people who come from different communities who speak different languages from different races. The issue of the disappeared is a, a problem which is common to different communities in this country. We are in the process of establishing the office uh, structures and we will be uh, setting up our head office and recruiting the necessary staff, setting up the regional officers. We have to be uh, by the law requires us to establish a tracing unit, a protection unit to provide psychosocial support. Disappearances has been a problem in this country for almost four decades. And for that reason, it is necessary to give relief to the families of the missing and the disappeared and also to ensure on record that enforced disappearances do not happen again in this country. The Judicature Amendment Bill was passed in Parliament with amendments on the 9th of this month. The bill, which drew mixed views from both members of the public and the political sphere, sought to set up permanent high court at bar to expedite the large number of pending cases in the country. Speaking to First at Nine on the development of the bill, Deputy Minister Kaunaratna Paranavitana says that the Ministry of Justice is currently taking measures to establish the proposed high courts within the next two weeks. However, the law fraternity has raised concerns over the possible use of it to fulfill political objectives. The Judicature Amendment Bill was passed in Parliament with amendments on the 9th of this month, which amends the Judicature Act No. 2 of 1978. 119 voted in favour of the bill, while 52 voted against, with many, however, not being present. This makes provisions for a permanent high court at bar to try, hear and determine the trials of the offences specified in the sixth schedule of the Act. The new law will also enable the Chief of Justice to establish special high courts and appoint three judges to them as needed, as well as to speed up cases in relation to bribery and corruption. Currently, Sri Lanka's courts, which act as investigative magistrates weighing evidence before a trial can be started, can take up to five years before defendant even reaches the dock. However, speaking to First at Nine, Counsel, Head of Chambers, Attorney at Law Krishma Varnasudia says that if the bill is used to fulfil political objectives, the law fraternity will not be hesitant to stand against such actions. There is a danger that this may be used for political gain or for political reason. Now that would not be an exercise of the people's judicial power as enshrined in the constitution that is supposed to be uh, brought forward by the exercise of judicial action. Therefore, the law does not function in an oblivion or a vacuum state. No, The law functions, the law is a living dynamic organism, it functions in a living society. So when we consider law and its implications, we need to look at the socio-political environment. Now, for three and a half years, something that was not done. For three and a half years, something that we as civilian, civil society organizations, uh, civil society activists wanted to bring to books for something not to be done. Suddenly, February elections come forth and the people give them a, give, give the present regime, present government a very strong message that they are not happy with what is happening. Suddenly, this is rushed through. Now, if this is going to be used... Because there is only one and a half more years to go for a possible election, whether presidential or general, to punish those who the present regime or members of the present regime feel are going to be a competition for them at the next election, then we as members of the legal fraternity are going to be concerned when you go to cherry pick on which people to prosecute or which persons to try and bring before these special courts. But certainly there is a need. There is a need to expeditiously deal with this sort of crime, particularly crimes that relate to the squandering of, of public assets because we are living in a country where people can't afford three square meals a day. So if this recent amendment to the Judicature Act also is going to be used for such political reasons, for political gain, then we as members of the legal fraternity are going to be very concerned and we are not going to hesitate to stand against such action. Meanwhile, Deputy Minister of Science, Technology, Research, Skills Development and Vocational Training and Candian Heritage, Karuna Ratna Paranivitana, spoke on the development of the Act following the passage of the Bill in Parliament. Once the Speaker places signature on it, it will become the law of the country. It will be done soon. And after that, within two weeks, Justice Minister has to establish this court. She has to find out place, suitable places, build in and provide all facilities. And one pressing uh, problem was the shortage of judges, but that was, that problem also has been solved now. The president has enabled to appoint extra judges. Uh, now 
it is possible possible within next few weeks to do that and after that uh, the prosecution can be started now i don't think we should not waste on time on criticism and those this bill uh, was passed according to the supreme court determination that is fully lawful now uh, it is high time to implement the law The National Alliance for Lawyers Association was summoned to appear before the commission to investigate allegations of bribery or corruption today to provide their statement in relation to a complaint lodged against two ministers by the association. They charged that ministers Lakshman Kiriala and Faiza Mustafa made statements on the political stage during the local authorities election that are in violation of election laws. The National Alliance for Lawyers Association lodged a complaint against Minister of Provincial Councils, Local Government and Sports, Faiza Mustafa, and Minister of Public Enterprise and Candy City Development, Lakshman Kiriala, for flouting election laws during the recent local authorities' election. Therefore, the Commission to Investigate Allegations of Bribery or Corruption, who have commenced investigations, requested the association to give their statement today in this regard. They have threatened public in some ways to get the vote for their parties as ministers what they can't do according to the law and already we have submitted the video clips uh, paper articles and some social media clips we have gathered against them what they have told in public we are eagerly waiting to get down those two ministers to the commission and take their statements and act against them on their activities and already uh, we have now we are going to start our protest to get down the provincial council elections a fire broke out at the main storage facility of a private apparel company located along the borupona road in ratmalana this afternoon The fire completely gutted the warehouse however no casualties were reported. The fire broke out in the third floor of an apparel storage facility belonging to a privately owned textile company located near the Hindu College along the Borupuna road in Ratmalana at around 1 o'clock this afternoon. The Dehiwala Mount Lavinia Fire Brigade said it deployed two units to douse the fire along with the help of fire brigades of Colombo Airport in Ratmalana, Tri Forces and police. The storage facility had ready-made clothes with material also stored in it. It took around 5 hours to douse the fire but the cause of it is yet to be identified. The Little Hearts project of the Manusad Darana humanitarian campaign received another boost with the Sri Lanka army donating a sum of 70 million rupees. The tally was accumulated by collecting half a day salary from all members of the army. Thousands of children with heart diseases and critical illnesses in Sri Lanka do not have timely access to treatment lady ridge bay hospital for children is the only tertiary care referral center for children with congenital heart disease and other critical illnesses in the country the objective of the little hearts project is to build a six storied intensive care unit for the lady ridge bay children's hospital sri lanka army with much generosity donated 70 million rupees accumulated with every members of the army donating half a day salary to the cause The donation was then handed over to President Maithri Pala Sirisena at the Presidential Secretariat last Thursday. The army got to know that Manusad Deran is doing a greater part of this project. The soldiers of the army decided to donate half a day salary as the first phase. This is not the end but the beginning. Sri Lanka army is ready to lend a hand to this project at any time possible. You are watching Sri Lanka's premier news channel. Other 
Country's manager of Sri Lanka's Imperial Teas Private Limited in Russia, RTM Latishkov, expresses his delight over the efforts of the representatives of the Ceylon Tea Board in Russia and the Russian Trading Committee in lifting the ban imposed on Sri Lankan tea exports by Russia. Russia banned Sri Lankan tea exports to the country following the discovery of a beetle called Capra in a consignment of tea packaging. Expressing views over the matter, the visiting country manager for Russia said that Russia could have faced possible shortages had the issue dragged for more than a month. Giving credit to its quality, Imperial Tea's private limited's country manager in Russia, Artyom Latishkov, places Ceylon tea at the top of the list in the Russian market. Historically, 95% of our population drink tea. 1960 or 1970 years of previous century, uh, our population begin drink Ceylon tea and it's the, one of the most popular uh, teas in Russia. I think because the quality of this tea the best with comparison and other supplying tea countries. He also expressed his delight over the ban imposed by Russia over Sri Lankan tea exports being lifted soon. Russia banned Sri Lankan tea exports to the country following the discovery of a beetle called Capra in a consignment of tea packaging. Happy for us that with representatives of Ceylon Tea Board in Russia, they became negotiations with uh, Russian Trading Committee uh, in the next day to this uh, happening. And these questions were fixed uh, during maybe three weeks. But those three weeks were very nervous for all tea business uh, person in Russia and in Sri Lanka also. Tea warehouses uh, in Russia have uh, two, three months storage. Three weeks not supplying, it's uh, not any problem for tea business in Russia. Final customers, nothing know about this. Uh, I think that who not in tea business, not thinking about it and not uh, read this news that it happens because uh, tea community do the most quickly and the most best they can do in order to fix this problem. On shelves, tea were during all this time. If it uh, happens more than one month, I think uh, there are shortage on the warehouses begin at a different part of Russia. Textile traders in India's western Surat city said yesterday that the production of yarn has dropped by about 50% post the price rise due to varying levies up to 18% in goods and services tax. The traders added that owing to fall in production, as many as 400,000 employees be belonging to the industry have been thrown out of work and some weavers were forced to sell their looms for scrap. GST, hailed as India's biggest tax overhaul since independence, has replaced more than a dozen federal and state levies and is unifying a $2 trillion economy and 1.3 billion people into one of the world's biggest common markets. Ex-Malaysian Prime Minister Najib Razak has been banned from leaving the country. This comes after Najib said that he and his wife were planning to go on an overseas holiday today. Earlier this week, Najib's long-ruling Barisan National Coalition suffered a shock electoral defeat. The result in this week's Malaysian election gripped the world with the Barisan National Coalition, which had ruled the country for decades since its independence, lost out to a new opposition coalition named the Pakatan Harapan, led by BNC's former leader Mahathir Mohamad. Mahathir came out of retirement and defected to the opposition to take on and beat former protégé Najib Razak, with Mahathir saying that the corruption allegations against Najib is embarrassing for the party. On Thursday, Mahathir Mohamad was sworn in as Malaysia's new Prime Minister, becoming the world's oldest elected leader at 92, and today, former Premier Najib and his wife were being banned from leaving the country by immigration officials. Najib said earlier that he and his wife would go on a holiday today and it is believed they intended to fly to Jakarta, the capital of Indonesia. Mahathir has said there will be a thorough investigation into cases of alleged corruption including the one involving the state investment fund. Former US President George W. Bush warned against the dangers of isolation and prom promoted humanitarian work abroad as he received an award in Washington, D.C. recently. 
accepting an award for his work on global aids from the Atlantic Council. Bush uttered the words invoking former British Prime Minister Winston Churchill. Former US President George W. Bush warned against the dangers of isolation as he accepted an award recently for his work on global aids from the Atlantic Council in Washington, D.C. His comments come in a backdrop where U.S. President Donald Trump has pulled out of an international nuclear accord with Iran, dismaying European allies who had tried to salvage the deal and prompting some former officials, including former CIA Director Leon Panetta, to caution against the U.S. isolating itself from the world. Very important for our fellow citizens to remember these words from Winston Churchill. America is indispensable for the world and the dangers of isolation loom. The price of greatness is responsibilities. One cannot rise to be, in many ways, the leading community in the civilized world without being involved in its problems, without being convulsed by its agonies and inspired by its causes. If this had been proved in the past as it had been, it will become indisputable in the future. People of the United States cannot escape world responsibility. I wholeheartedly agree. Rafael Nadal's record run on clay ended yesterday at the Madrid Open with Austria's Dominic Thiem dumping the world number one out of the competition. The result means that the Spaniard will lose the world number one ranking. South African Kevin Anderson also booked a spot in today's semi-final with a hard-fought three-set win over Dusan Lachovic. Rafael Nadal came into his quarter-final match against Austria's Dominic Thiem yesterday on the back of a record, winning 50 consecutive sets on a single surface by beating Argentine Diego Schwartzman the day before. Thiem, who lost to Nadal in the Monte Carlo quarter-finals last month, was the last player to be the Spaniard on clay at last year's Rome Masters and he was on similar form, beating the Spaniard 7-5-6-3 to book a place in the semi-finals. Nadal's loss means that he will lose the world number one spot to Roger Federer when the revised ATP rankings are released on Monday. Despite the defeat, Nadal will still be favourite to win the French Open for a record extending 11th time next month. Meanwhile, early in the day, South African Kevin Anderson beat Dusan Lachovic in three sets to reach the semi finals. The match ended 7 6 3 6 6 3 to Anderson, who will now go on to face Nadal's conqueror, Dominic Thiem. A Spanish outlet reports that Paris Saint-Germain and Brazil forward Neymar held talks with Real Madrid in March over a proposed transfer to the Spanish club. The Brazilian became the most expensive player of all time last August when PSG swiped him from Barcelona for 222 million euros, although Real have coveted the forward since he was 13 years old. Real president Florentino Perez recently said his side tried to sign Neymar before he joined rivals Barca in 2013 and reiterated his desire to bring the Brazilian to Madrid. Now, a Spanish outlet says that Paris Saint-Germain and Brazil forward Neymar held talks with Real Madrid in March over a proposed transfer to the Spanish club. Neymar has scored a remarkable 28 goals in 30 games in all competitions for the French champions, although he has not always cut a happy figure in Paris. He had a furious dispute with strike partner Edinson Cavani in September over the right to take set pieces, with a repeat of it leading to some PSG fans to booing Neymar. Shilla Fernando is at the other than Weather Centre with your forecast first evening edition. A very good evening and welcome to Forecast First. Your temperatures for tomorrow are to vary between 21 and 33 degrees Celsius with the highest temperature recorded in Muletivu. Well, looking at the map, a low pressure zone is set to develop from the central hills and will gradually disappear. Well, not much sun reported in the island tomorrow as many areas of the island, including Jaffna, Mana, Waunia, Anuradhapura, Kandy, Kalambo, Gaul and Mathura as well as Hambantota will experience heavy showers with thunder showers also expected. That's all we have from the Weather Centre tonight. Up next is your City by City forecast.
And that's it from Mother Darina first at 9 for tonight. But before we go, we'd like to leave you with visuals from the red carpet of the 71st annual Cane Film Festival. The festival is currently being held and it will run until the 19th of this month. We hope you enjoy these visuals and have a pleasant evening. Bringing you the news and information 24 hours a day. This is Sri Lanka's premier news channel. Other Varana 24-7.